This is the fourth video in the Aggregate Demand and Aggregate Supply series, which is Unit 2.2 of the IB Macroeconomic Syllabus. In this video, I will talk about the shifts in aggregate demand that are caused by changes in government spending in the G component of aggregate demand. Let's get started. So the learning outcome for this video is to explain how the aggregate demand curve can be shifted by changes in government spending due to factors including political and economic priorities. This is the learning outcome for this video. Um, obviously, the government's political priorities will affect its level of spending. Things like the election campaign promises when people run for office, uh, whether it's in Congress or Parliament or Presidency or Prime Minister, uh, they can promise things like more subsidies for farmers or job security for construction builders. These election campaign promises affect the political priorities and hence the government spending of the economy. National security issues like spending on defence and wars, um, counter-terrorism measures, fighting drug trafficking. So obviously the national security priorities of the government are part of its political priorities. Austerity measures. Um, some governments uh, uh, claim that they can balance a government budget deficit and they can try and get government debt under control. So when governments borrow a lot of money, um, a lot of uh, people running for office use that as a way to become more popular. They attack the government for um, accumulating so much debt and they promise that they'll balance the budget deficit. Uh, governments also spend just for the general welfare of society, like providing public goods like roads and defense, providing merit goods like education and health care. Uh, also, the government's foreign policy priorities or foreign policy issues, like giving aid to developing countries, um, infrastructure building agreements between countries, like when China goes to you know, Ethiopia and um, uh, makes a deal with them that China will invest in building a, a highway or an airport. Uh, so all of these are the political priorities of the government. They obviously affect the level of government spending. Now let's move on to the economic priorities. So what are some of the economic priorities that affect government spending? Well, if the government's economic priority is to boost economic growth, it's likely going to spend more. So government spending will increase and aggregate demand will increase. The curve will shift to the right. Uh, if the government wants to, say, maintain a stable rate of inflation uh, because prices are rising too quickly, it will probably spend less because there's, um, prices are rising, there's too much spending. So the government will spend less and therefore aggregate demand will decrease. Um, if the government wants to lower the unemployment rate, it wants to create more jobs and uh, encourage employment, it will do the same as boosting economic growth. So it will actually increase government spending, which will lead to an increase in aggregate demand, and the aggregate demand curve will shift to the right. Um, if the government wants to, say, achieve a more equitable distribution of income and wealth, it could spend more on um, products uh, on goods and services that are used by people uh, who are less fortunate, uh, people um, unemployed, uh, single parents, uh, people that are from the poorer social classes. So again, these are the government's economic priorities and they obviously affect its um, level of government spending. Now, when we talk about fiscal and monetary policy in the later videos, which I'm going to introduce in this video, but we'll develop in more detail in the later videos, this will be clearer to you all. So there are some government policy tools that affect aggregate demand. The first one is fiscal policy. The second one is monetary policy. What's the difference between both? What are they? Let's find out. Uh, fiscal policy basically refers to government policies relating to the use of taxation and government expenditure to influence aggregate demand. So that includes both direct taxes, which are taxes on income, taxes on wages, on rent, on profits, or on interest, it also includes indirect taxes, which are taxes on spending. So when governments pass taxes on the sales of goods and services, that these are indirect taxes, and government expenditure. If the government, say, wants to increase aggregate demand, it could lower direct and indirect taxes and raise government expenditure. By lowering taxes and raising government expenditure, this will increase aggregate demand and shift the aggregate demand curve to the right. And the opposite is true. If you want to um, if you want to reduce aggregate demand, you could um, increase the level of direct and indirect taxes and lower the level of government expenditure, which will have the overall impact of shifting the aggregate demand curve to the left. 
Now let's move on to monetary policy. What is this? We'll find out in the next slide. Uh, monetary policy refers to government policies that are relating to the supply of money and the level of interest rates in the economy to influence aggregate demand. So the two things are the supply of money and the level of interest rates. If the government wants to increase aggregate demand, it could increase the supply of money and lower the level of interest rates. If interest rates are lower, consumers will be encouraged to borrow more and save less, so consumption spending will increase, investment spending will increase. Um, the government could also use monetary policy to decrease aggregate demand. It could um, restrict the supply of money and raise the interest rate, and this would make borrowing less appealing and saving more appealing, so people will end up spending less and the overall level of aggregate demand will decrease and the aggregate demand curve will shift to the left. So we've seen how um, government fiscal policy, which is the use of um, taxes and government expenditure, as well as monetary policy, which is the supply of money and the level of interest rates, can all affect aggregate demand depending on the government's economic and political priorities. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.